everyone, I'm Captain Logan, Glamour. and I have given Eric a license to review on Your Majesty's Secret Service. This is, where are we, six or seven in the James Bond movies? Six. This is the first not Sean Connery movie. Six. And yes. uh, this is this is Lazy B by himself, and then we're going to go back to Sean yep, Connery Yep, this is the only first Lazy B. Uh, I, I recommend, if anyone wants to know about George Lazy B, there's a documentary on Hulu called... Uh, being James Bond, or I really want to watch that. You told me it is just that. him telling the story of his life and how he just conned his way into being James Bond. He was a he was a male model. He wasn't even an actor. Uh, he wasn't even an actor. He just kind of conned his way into it. And it's uh, it's really fascinating. And I didn't hate him like I thought he would. I would, but at the same time, you can kind of tell this is not a trained actor we're dealing. No with. one 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 of the tragedies. Uh, but I, but I will say this one I did watch and I'm very excited to talk about with it. Yeah, him. one of the tragedies about George Lazenby is well. Because I often describe this film as the best Bond movie with the worst Bond. Um, which evens out weird. It's yeah. in my top three, but it's not my number one. If if he was great, it would probably be my number one. Um, I think he could have grown into a great Bond. Do you? I don't think he is here. I think he could have. I would just have to get... And I guess I did as I was watching the movie. I was going to say, I guess I would have to kind of get used to the face and the body type and stuff. He doesn't look like James Bond. No, he doesn't. But he could look like a 70s he, James he Bond. He looks like a stunt double who they That's didn't true. realize wasn't looks, a stunt he looks, double. He looks a little bit more thuggy. Yeah. 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 He could have been one of the heavies or something. Yeah. No, he totally could have. Um, but yeah, this uh, he's not an actor. Um, I think he does do a couple other films. Uh, he was supposed to do a film with Bruce Lee that never got made because Bruce Lee died. But um, Oh, interesting. But um, So yeah, this is... Uh, the first, the first Bond film without, without, without James Bond, we kind of wink at the camera and say it's a different person, but it's the same character. We also then make sure you know it's the same character. Because With a line that makes no sense. Well, well, well... You're talking about that initial wink at the beginning? Well, well yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think that's more than a wink. That, I, it's, it's weird, because, like, who is the character talking about when he says that? Like, it doesn't make any sense. You no, know, it's just fourth wall breaking. Yep. But if you thought that there might be some he kind of... He says the other fellow, and I'm yeah. like... Go, who are you? Who are you talking? Now, apparently, about? that comes from James like Bond. every time he was complaining on set, he'd, he'd be like, "I bet you didn't make the other fellow do this." So they just threw that in there. Um, but then we immediately tell you this is the same character because the opening we just show scenes from previous James Bond films. Yeah, and then there's also a scene where he goes to his office. And he's like, "Here's here's the knife, and here's here's this here's the watch, and it's just it's just props from the previous films." Uh, so you know this is the same guy. Uh, and this is the movie, and sort of the same continuity, but it still retcons things. It so right? the Blofeld yes. thing is still the Blofeld problem, thing right? is a retcon, and that is because they wanted to say like insanely faithful to the novel, and which is why the script is so good. I'm yep, sure. Yep. Uh, so so it's, like, it's 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 in my top three uh, of the Bond novels as well. Um, they want they're, they're they're insanely faithful to 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 the novel. They took the novels out of sequence, so they did uh, You Only Live Twice uh, before they did this. In the novel, Bond is melancholy and really out of it because his wife just died in, in You Only Live Twice. In the movie, and that's part of the You Only Live Twice thing, is he's dead inside. Right. Um, the title meant something. Yeah, and it, it doesn't in the, it in, the, in the movie. Yeah. So he meets both at, at the end of You Only Live Twice, in this movie, they just said, screw it. There's no home video. They're not going to remember. Um, yeah. They're not going to question this. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so so, this movie is the movie why that fun f th fan theory that people have where they're like, maybe all the different James Bond, maybe James Bond's just a code name and like they're all different people. Every single James Bond reference is this movie. So, so that doesn't work. It does not work because we know for a fact that they've all been married to Tracy. Um, so unless they all, unless they codenamed all of their dead wives, Tracy Bond, uh, it seems unlikely. Uh, this is also one of the longest Bond films. Yeah, but I don't think it's too long. No, um, no, I agree. I, I never kind of lose myself in it. I mean, there's a couple of draggy places. I'm kind of used to that with these I movies. I think you could tighten up at least one, if not both, chases down the mountain. <laughs> No, I think you can tighten that up also, uh, but once we get into that really elaborate chase at the end... The bobsled chase? In a bobsled? <laughs> I wouldn't take anything out of that, man. That whole thing was awesome. Um, th this movie, if, if you don't mind my saying, yeah. um, is 
really serious. Like 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 it's a it's it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty smart story that is actually character driven and certainly more character driven than any of the movies before it. It's definitely my favorite so far. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of that's because Bond actually has a character arc and he seems like sort of a real person and I know what and he there's wants emotion he's after and something and yeah and there's a little bit of pathos right and uh, he, you know, he's made kind of a tragic character you know where um, he is kind of debating uh, there's an internal conflict in this movie right mm. like he's, he's internally debating with himself throughout uh, about basically about whether or not like he doesn't talk about it but you can tell this is going on um, about whether or not he's going to uh, you know, marry the scroll or stay in the life, and he can't have both. Yeah, and yeah. Um, but but uh, it, it's it's this um, you know really smart character driven movie that has the insane over the top action that we got with Thunderball and mm-hmm. Goldfinger, mm-hmm. and uh, it blends really well because that that helps to to keep it fun and and, and, and lively, entertaining, and that kind of makes it like the st- the stamp of the James Bond movies. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a much more character driven, uh, much more human story and kind of a I'm, I'm not going to say a smarter story because Goldfinger no, is a pretty smart story maybe that's not fair um, yeah. but it's it's a it's a smarter told story uh, well I mean yeah. let's be honest the villain plot in this is more ridiculous than Goldfinger yeah <laughs> remind me what exactly he's doing in this again he is it's been a few, it's been okay. a few days so so he is he's running a lab that's supposed to cure people of their allergies, oh, such yes. as being allergic nice. to chickens. Yes, I forgot about that. You no, love that's... chickens. Remember when you came oh, here and you yeah. didn't like chickens? Yeah, that's right. It's it's uh it's the spinny thing on the ceiling that uh that that therapeutically, uh hypnotically yeah, it's, it's makes the lights, me, yeah. pulsing lights. Yeah. Um, it, there's a there's a TOS episode that is just like that. Uh, and I think we use it as a torture device in this, don't we? No. Do we not? No, okay. we don't it's, use it as a torture device. We use it as a torture device. Um, we use it as a mind co- control device. Oh, okay, okay. We're actually doing... Okay, well, but in TOS, it's it's both. It's like, it's a it, it's sort of a torture device, but it ends up mind controlling, yeah. Uh, it's, so it's so, so what we're actually... Um, what he's actually I'll doing... Think I think he is curing them of, of the allergies. That's that's up for debate. I'm not sure. It's psychosomatic. Yeah, I think he's he's curing them of their allergies. Well, he is, because they're all eat- when When all the ladies are eating, they're all eating the food that they're allergic to. Um, like that's that that's the thing that we do. Like like the girl that's allergic to chicken is eating chicken. Um, so he is curing them, but he's also brainwashing them to go put poison somewhere. There's a they're all from rich families and they're gonna go back and do something. I forget exactly what it is. It's different in the book. In the book, it's yeah, I think it's just blackmail. I think it's just they have access to all their family's information. He's gonna get the money from them, right? In the movie, it's a global world domination plot where he's like, he's like, I've, I've invented a cure for allergies, which means I've invented a reverse cure for allergies. Like, I'm going to kill all of the plants. Like, I, like he threatens to kill, like, <laughs> whole uh, lines of, 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 of plant life. Like, he's like, I'll just wipe out corn, like, kind of a thing. Uh, and that's going to be his big threat. Um, yeah, I kind of lost sight of the villain plot. It's not as important because it's just, it's James Bond stopping him. Um, because it's, it's, this is paced a little bit more like a novel. We're like we have a whole section before we get to the James Bond action part of the, where he meets Tracy and he has the thing with her dad and like, we Spectre's in the background but like that's not what the movie's about until he finally goes on the mission, um, like there's a whole like this is almost a four act movie, M- maybe it's only maybe it's only three but like, that beginning section yeah. feels. Very disconnected from the rest of the movie, plot wise, but that ties in because it's racy. Yeah, it, 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 it's a it's a much more uh, deliberately paced kind of. And thing. Her, her dad says, "I'll give you X amount of money if you if you marry marry her." And then by the end, because she just needs a good man. Yeah, and 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 he's not. I mean, it's it's the sensibilities of the day. Um, although although he has played kind of kind of kind of like they they kind of roll their eyes at that. Like he has played as old school. He thinks like, um, and she's pretty independent. Yeah, yeah. No, she's a she's a very strong woman. But it's it's kind of fun because I feel like Bond before this, I don't feel like has been a conventionally sympathetic protagonist. No, and I think that they're transitioning him within this movie into a more traditionally sympathetic protagonist. Right? We're like, we're like, we're we're maybe supposed to think at the beginning that if Bond considered leaving the service 
and being with her, it was partly for the money, and it's it's not going to be that? No, no. Uh, he legitimately loves this woman as much as you can the two-hour film. Uh, two and a half hour film. Yeah, um, right. And they have as much chemistry as they can. I think she plays it really well. Yeah, he's just not a great actor. He's just not a great but actor. But he kills the last scene. He does. And that's the thing, is you have to give him the end of the scene. movie. Uh, yeah. it's, I mean, it's like the mist, right? Yeah. Like, it's just, it, it makes the movie. Um, it, it's also the reason that, that uh, Louis Armstrong's All the Time in the World should have been the theme of this song, of this movie. I agree, but I think you would have to reorchestrate it. No, probably, but... It's too, it's too light. And and, uh, and 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 bouncy where where it's played where it's played it needs to be that way. It's, it's the love song ballad of the montage. It makes sense it's that way, but you you would have needed to orchestrate it such where it's it, it's not it's not sinister but more um, mysterious mm -hmm. because that's what we always do with with bond song, with bond songs. Yeah. And you basically do that just by um, just by putting in a, a string section instead of guitars and stuff mm -hmm. as they had, and um, maybe. Um, Maybe transpose it so there's more minor chords and stuff. I don't know, because the the fact that like his last line is uh, is uh, we have all the time in the world. He says it to her corpse. That should be the theme of the movie. Like yeah. the fact that they had they, they had that song written. That should be the theme of the movie. I'm not even sure, and maybe this is blasphemy to you because 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 the book is so close and you like that book. Mm -hmm. Almost could have been the title of the film, really. No, I, no, I agree. It, it, it's it's one of the weirder like titles it just like like all it's the titles generic, it's I think. really generic all the other titles are really punchy I would have wanted it to have something yeah and um, really poetic again in that like original series mm -hmm. Star Trek kind of way mm -hmm. um, by the way Dagger of the Mind was the episode I was trying to think of okay um, um, but yeah um, no it's it's a weird title I I, I agree I, I don't care for it um, it doesn't mean anything other than that he, maybe he's thinking about leaving. Yeah, Her Majesty's Secret Service. That's no, not. It's 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 not a good title. No, and, I, I. And he kind of goes rogue in this movie. He does well. Right, like isn't he kind of going against his orders? He does to get the information. Initially? Okay. And then he comes back and says, "Well, I got this information. I want I want to be put back on the case." And he was like, "And I'm oh, like, okay, oh, so right. he's not going on a case though by himself. The whole no, movie. no, um, they're still behind him. Yeah, and he's even less rogue than that in the book. Uh, okay. M is the one forcing him to do things. But um, so this is the movie that has Tracy Tracy Bond, who is, I think, the best Bond girl at least until Eva Green in uh, in Casino Royale. Um, she's just. Really captivating, like, yeah. so like she 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 controls the screen kind of a thing. Yeah, I think so too. Um, got a lot of presence, and you only get limited time with them because she's not in the middle of this film at all, right? Um, but like when she shows back up, there there's no like, who is she? Like you know immediately who she is. Uh, she's just she's really magnetic and really powerful. Um, uh, this, and I buy their love. As much as I can with, yeah. with him, um, I mean, I mean, I completely buy the dad. I think so too. But I mean, again, possibly a blasphemous thing to say. I'm not sure how well Sean Connery would have played that. I don't think he would have at all. Um, uh, there's this film is so human. Uh, there's a there's a scene where James Bond is being hunted through crowds. He which just always seems so condescending to the chicks he's with. Well, like, and he's also always in control of everything. Yeah. Uh, there's there's a scene in this movie that is like a scene in Doctor No. And I think a scene in uh, in From Marshall and Love, and definitely in Thunderbolt, where like there's people coming at him from all sides, right? Like he's in a crowd, and they're all, and he's starting to panic, and there's a weird thing with a bear. With like, with a, do you remember with the bear that takes a picture of him? He's like, ah! <laughs> and he's just he's panicking because he's gonna die. The villains are closing him from all sides. So he just sits down, and like I think kind of accepts his fate. Like he just doesn't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, you would never have gotten that scene with Sean Connery. He would never have played that scene. He wouldn't play it like that. Um, if and and I don't know with with Lazenby if it's talent or lack of ego. Yeah, I mean he doesn't have that, but maybe he did in acting. Yeah, and, and it, right. Where it's just that's what I mean is that he he's not going to have necessarily the same kind of ego as, as Connery with acting. It's like I'm not going to play that. I'm, it's not so much I'm too good for this. It's it's I'm I'm great at everything. Yeah, you know I mean those yeah, are different yeah, yeah. kind of ways of. Yeah, and Connery at this point certainly was very I'm too good for this. Or I'm done doing. I this. feel like I can and, and who knows I could be wrong. I feel like I can kind of see in the frame like this guy taking direction where he's doing what somebody told him to do. Yeah, um, I also think this movie could have been better 
uh, if, if it was Roger Moore's first one. And maybe that would have shaped Roger Moore's run in a completely different direction. And I've still never seen any of his, so I don't have it. He's much more comedic. He plays it much more campy. Um, but I think I think this film... But he's not a bad actor. Like, if this was his first film, I think I, I think he, he probably would have done like a better job. He would have played the script that he had. Yeah, yeah, and he probably would have done a better job in this film. Um, because he's an actual actor. Um, I just love this one because it was a real story. It, it's a real story. Um, and, and, I, and I didn't see the ending coming. Which is funny because, of course, James Bond doesn't get married. Yeah, yeah, of course. Sure. Uh, I, now, mean, I, I mean, I figured they were going to write it out of that some, somehow or that he would not, you know, like not be married in the next one or something. But uh, Now, uh, they, they did debate when they made this movie. They said we will either... They didn't know... Either if she would die at the end of this film or the beginning of the next one. They knew that she would die, but they thought maybe we end this movie with them driving off, and the next one would pick up seconds later with them pulling the car over and then them getting shot. They were probably trying to decide which one was like more of a knife for the audience, you know? Yeah, yeah, and so and, and so, so they went with this one, which, which thank God, because uh, you haven't seen the next film, but Shonery comes back, and we... Shonery. Uh, <laughs> we kind I wasn't going to stop you. We yeah, kind of pick up the threads from this movie, but... Like, barely. Like, it's... I'm so glad that we put that at the end of this and film. And you said that when you don't like it all. It's my least favorite James Bond movie. Wow. Um, Look forward to that, folks. Yeah, yeah. Next um, time. It's just... Uh, this ending is so powerful. and like yeah, it's really he, good. He plays it so well. Um, it's... It just... It hits me. It hits me every time. Um, and I don't know... The This, this maybe sounds weird, but... Something about the flavor of it seems like a thing you'd only get in the 60s. Yeah, which and it's 69. It's the it's last year it could be the 60s. Yeah, or, or in the in the 60s or, or like really early 70s. Yeah. Like, this this period, like that's the only way you would capture it the way we capture it. Yeah. Um, no, I think it's a phenomenal... Oh, and, and, and Telly Savalas plays Blofeld. I think he's the best Blofeld. He's my favorite Blofeld. Um, he doesn't really make a lot of an impression on me, but that's maybe fair. he just doesn't get enough screen time. I don't know. That's fair. Um, I mean, unfortunately, I don't think we actually cast the Blofelds great. Um, it'll be interesting to, to go back to Never Say Never Again because that is uh, Max. He's he's he, he's Ming in uh, Oh yeah, so I, I can't think of his name yeah, either. I, 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 like, it's it's really late. Um, uh, but that guy, um, he, uh, he 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 he's Blofeld in that. Um, I'll be interesting to go back to that. Uh, but no, I think I think of the people who play Blofeld, Tully Smalls commands the most presence. He has he has just a powerful nature about him. Uh, but he also, he seems both very strong and confident, but also like kind of particular. Uh, he holds a cigarette in a very specific way, and like he just has mannerisms where I, I both believe he would strangle someone, and then immediately like put hand sanitizer on. Like there's just a certain way about him that I, I, I like. Um, but yeah, no, um, I, I think this ends up being my third favorite. Um, I'll probably try and come up with some kind of ranking when I get to the end of all these. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, but at least right now, this. I'm really glad you had me watch this one. Yeah, no, it's it's important, um, and it's unfortunate because people didn't like it when it came out. It wasn't it wasn't what the other movies were, and he wasn't Sean Connery, yeah. and probably didn't help it a downer ending. It's the first James Bond movie to have a downer ending. Yeah, it probably felt like like uh, it wasn't a James Bond movie. Yeah, um, but it's really good, um, and and and. Like, I, I like the up, subversion because I don't, I, I don't like, I don't tend to care for the, um, the the particular formula these movies tend to go to go with. Yeah, and this and this does not have this typical Bond movie formula that we created or perfected with with Goldfinger and then used in Thunderball and you know, twice. This is a I different. Mean, I thing. really like Goldfinger, but yeah, um, but this totally is uh, no, no. Growing up, this was the movie that like people made fun of. Like I remember being like, "Oh, that was the guy. They only they only did one. He was so bad they fired him." And like. That movie's not 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 really that good, and then it's been reappraised in the, probably about the last decade, where everyone was like, "Wait, but it's actually a really good movie." Yeah, it's a really good James Bond movie. Uh, so yeah, yes, I really like it. I think it's really powerful. I think it's emotionally, I think it's one of the best James Bond films. Like, just I don't know, it's really good, and it's it's things that I like in James Bond movies. Like, there's no gadgets in this movie. Um, it gets to do the, the spectacle action, but it never goes too silly. Like, the bobsled is fun and maybe is a little silly, 
but I don't care. Yeah. Um, it's only silly in retrospect because of what we think of when we think of bobsleigh, right? Like, at the time, it's just an extreme sport thing that we're doing with James Bond. Now it's like, oh, it's a cool runnings, right? It's just a thing that, yeah, it's just a thing that would be in that setting. Yeah, yeah. And they yeah. do a lot of stuff with skis, too. Yeah. Yeah, and there's some really impressive uh, skiing stunts. There's also some not impressive uh, uh, rear projection. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of not skis. impressive rear projection. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but no, it's a really good one. If people have skipped this or didn't watch this, um, I feel like in Bond circles, this is one that most people hold up very highly. Yeah. But I don't know what casual people... You just have to look past that actor until he gets a little bit better as it goes along. And, he, and he's dubbed for like for like 30% of the movie. That's hilarious. So, so like, you only have to deal with that. Uh, there's so much of that. Are we still doing that with the with the girl too? No, no, no. She's she's a famous British actress from the Avengers. So but, that wasn't so, gonna happen. Whereas ever almost every other one previously was literally we just showed up and I was like, oh, you're Miss Hawaii. You're you're in the movie. We'll just dub you. We'll, we'll get we'll get an actress to to talk over you. And then isn't it really ironic who ends up playing Bond then? Because yep, it's just yep. a model. Yep, and we dub over him. <laughs> That's great. Yep. Ah, uh, these movies are weird. Well, everybody, thanks a lot for watching. We sure appreciate it. Uh, we are nearing the end of the omnibus, so uh, keep watching with us if you're watching on the playlist. And if you're just tuning in for this video, we sure appreciate it. Uh, we will see you again next time for what's the title of the next movie? Oh, the next one is uh, Diamonds Are Forever. Diamonds Are My Forever. My favorite James Bond movie. Yeah, a movie that Eric wishes was not forever. Well, anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Once again, I am Captain Logan. And I'm Eric. See you, folks.